I should be locked up. I should be in jail for giving this amount of information away for free. But I know it's gonna help because this one thing will transform your business. Chances are you're stuck in a loop doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Chill out, mate. Today, I'm gonna reveal something game-changing, something I put most of our success as a business down to. And that one thing is called OTAs, One Time Assets. And I made that phrase up, so if anyone nicks it, I want credit. Anyway, an OTA is something that you build, buy, or create once that lives on forever. Something that's usually digital, usually some form of media that can help yourself, your team, freelancers you work with, subcontractors, clients, or even your kids if you want to turn your family into slaves like I do. I don't care about your homework. 200 qualified leads before bed. So these one-time assets can live in every area of your business. Marketing, sales, delivery, team, finance, operations, whatever. I'll give you a couple of examples before we get into this properly so you've got an idea. But at the end, I am going to give you shit loads. Simply so you can steal them all and make loads of money. But do not steal the phrase one-time assets. Otherwise, I will Liam Neeson you and your family. And I will kill you. So for marketing, an example of an OTA might just be a brand guidelines document. You write your bio, upload your profile pic, logo, some of the photos, stuff like that. You put this onto a link and then you never have to bother collating all this information again. You're not scrambling around when someone invites you to a podcast and they want your bio, or if you're hiring a designer, you don't have to worry about supplying the fonts, etc., etc. You just send the link once. You build it once, you send the link once, that's why it's a one-time asset. For the sales part of your business, an OTA could be a sales script or a sales structure that you follow on calls. You fill out the correct flow for a call, you document it once, then every call you have, you're following the same tried and tested process. Removes the thinking. Rather than freestyling it all the time, falling off course, stumbling around and crying in the corner because you don't have any clients. I'm not crying, you're crying. Now for delivery, it could be a client dashboard template. You put the effort in to build one master dashboard that looks proper f***ing swish-like, then all you have to do is duplicate it and you never have to speak to any of those annoying clients ever again. Delete that last bit. But, 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 here is the problem. Building these things requires effort. They are a pain in the ass. And most of you lot are too f***ing lazy to put in that initial investment because you think you're saving time by cutting corners. But in the long term, it's actually costing you more and what you're really doing is killing your business slowly. However, this is a good thing. Because if you're lazy, your competitors are probably lazy too. So now it's time to capitalize. Anyway, as an example, let's say you spend two hours a week answering client questions on email. Let's call that on average 100 hours a year. Building out an OTA or a one-time asset like a client FAQ database might take 10 hours. So we've got 100 hours or 10 hours. Now I'm no brain surgeon and I am no clinical psychologist, but using my coagulator, that equates to a difference of 90 hours. Almost three working weeks, quick maths. If I said to you, right, block out 10 hours this week to build something, you'd probably come back and like, oh, well, I haven't got 10 hours spare. Okay, so if you haven't got 10 hours spare, you haven't f***ing got 100 hours spare either, have you? In fact, no one's got any f***ing spare time. Stop damaging the long term because you're scared to sacrifice the short term. Because with those extra 90 hours you've just gained, you can go and build out a brand guidelines document or a client dashboard and have those things working for you whilst you're not even there. Because without these OTAs, most of us are operating reactively just repeating the same stuff when we don't even need to. But if you can focus on the long term, my feline friends, every hour that you put into building OTAs will compound and they'll allow you to complete tasks and finish projects and do other stuff without working for longer. Right, now you've had your look in, let's hop in and have a look at some of these OTA examples. And I'm gonna give you a load in a sec, but these fall into a few categories. One-time content, one-time templates, one-time sales assets, one-time process documents, one-time client assets, one-time team assets. Literally anything you repeat can be turned into media, a process or a system, or a mixture of all three. Then nine times out of 10, it can be automated or delegated. But that, <laughs> that's a different video. A quick word from our sponsors, me. I've just put together a 13 minute free training showing you the five secrets to hit five figure months using LinkedIn. But I'm not giving it away for free for long because I'll sober up soon. So if you want to find out how you can start hitting five figure months using only organic content on LinkedIn, then hit the link under this video and you can download it for free. Anyway, back to the vid. But all of these things are going to transform your business dramatically. So I'm going to rattle like 20 of them off. Number one, carousel and design templates. You change a few bits, but the majority of the work is already done. Number two, a master chat GPT document. This is a document that contains your client pain points, your processes, desires, your backstory, history, opinions, content types, everything. And this took me about 10, 15 hours to build out, but now everything is in one place. 
and I can use it to help inform the ideation and the thinking behind my content. Number three, a list of detailed chat GPT prompts, specific prompts for every scenario so you can use AI to do some or all of your work if you're lazy. Number four, creating your own GPT that answers questions for you. you and pass this on to whoever you like, friends, family, clients, team, whatever. I've got old Chris, which is 80 year old me, who he like life coaches me. And then I've just got Chris Bot, who's got all my history, all my information, content, etc., etc. Game changer. Number five, a database to store all your call to actions. We've all got the same sort of call to actions on social media, follow, share, like, subscribe, book a call, download this, click here, whatever. Store them in one place and you don't have to keep retyping them. Number six, YouTube videos. Any video you ever release may as well go on YouTube too. Instead of just sticking it on a platform where it has like a 48 hour shelf life, put it on YouTube. We're still getting cold bookings from YouTube videos I made a year ago. Number seven, a video of you breaking down your offer, your process or some client case studies. You can post this on YouTube, you can host it on your website, you can post it on LinkedIn, you can even send it to strangers in the DMs. Number eight, client interview recordings. Ask your high performing clients to hop on a Zoom, interview them about the experience, chop it up and post it everywhere. Number nine, an email welcome sequence that warms people up when they sign up to your newsletter. Welcome them, build trust with them, show them how you can help them and then call them to action. Number 10, brand guidelines. We've spoken about this one already and I don't like repeating myself, okay? I actually, I hate repeating myself. I said, I don't like repeating. Number 11, DM scripts. Stay consistent by keeping a list of common replies. Store them in a Google doc and you can just paste them when necessary. And no, I don't mean sending the same frigging message to everyone. You get the idea. Number 12, that's two Roman Vs, Roman numerals, sales script. We've talked about this and I do not like, you know what I don't like. Number 13, payment links for every scenario. Take 30 minutes out and create a Stripe link for every single product and every single sales scenario of that product and store them with your sales script or in a Google Doc. Number 14, a list of frequent objections. Compile a list of the reasons people don't buy. Then engineer your responses. Then every night, practice them in the mirror until your wife gets out of bed and goes to sleep in the spare room. Number 15, a list of FAQs that you get on calls. People are gonna ask the same questions on calls all the time. What's involved, Chris? How much does it cost, Chris? Can you offer a guarantee, Chris? Is there a payment plan, Chris? Can I pay you five times the amount because you're so fucking brilliant, Chris? So I just keep a list of all of them. And yes, you can pay more. Number 16, client contract templates. You build it, edit the bare minimum, and then send them out in 60 seconds or less, or use automation. Number 17, an onboarding landing page. This could feature a welcome video that details the steps when clients are signing up, could be an onboarding form, could be a place to schedule a kickoff call, detail the first steps that happen in that working relationship so you don't have to keep repeating yourself. You know what I don't like. 18, a client briefing form or an onboarding form. We've just covered this, but this could just live on Google Forms or type form. You send one link via an automated email to your clients and you get notified when they've filled it in. Number 19, client dashboard templates. Build these out in Notion, then you can just duplicate it and send it, or even better, have a project manager do it for you. And finally, number 20, a CRM of all your existing clients with their progress mapped out so you can keep up to date. Keeping track of client progress is brilliant, but don't store it all up here. Keep it in a CRM. No, you don't need to buy one, you can just use a Google Sheet. So to wrap up, a couple of tips. Don't make your OTAs time bound. Don't put the year in them. Don't say this week, Wednesday, whatever. For marketing OTAs, keep them wide enough and generic enough to satisfy all clients but also bespoke enough to repel people who aren't your target market. And for team OTAs, create them as if the person watching them is a complete beginner. Even if you've been working with the same BA for five years, he or she might leave and then you'll have to recreate it. Start from scratch with these. Anyway, that's quite enough out of me this week. I've got to go and pick up my daughter from kickboxing so she can keep working those leads, generate enough leads so she can afford to pay me money so I can feed her. <laughs>